June 2014 exam. Consider stock D E F. The coupon rate is 10.9% per year. The yield to maturity is 8.7% per year. Settlement date, 12th of August 2014. And maturity date, 8th of March 2044. What you ask to calculate is the all-in price, making this a bond question. In particular, calculating all-in price. Make sure that when you're studying, you really consolidate the method that you use for calculating all-in price. I would say do it by calculation, because there's quite a few steps involved, so don't get too hung up with your financial calculator. Um, but make sure that you really know each step, understand it while you're studying, and then commit those steps to memory so that you can do these questions quickly in an exam. I would always start this question by drawing a timeline, just so that you can visualize exactly what's going on um, in relation to settlement dates and interest dates and maturity dates. So let's have a look at our timeline. First I'm going to put in my settlement date and the settlement date is the 12th of August 2014. So that's my settlement date. Right, I then like to go next to my maturity date and work backwards from there. So the maturity date is the 8th of March 2044 and we know that interest is earned or that we get our coupon rate every six months so let's just go six months before that which takes us into the previous year 8th of September 2043 that allows us to now go back and just work out our dates around the 12th of August we know we're dealing with September and March each year so let's look before the 12th of August would be the 8th of March of the same year. Following the 12th of August would be the 8th of September of the same year. And I'm just going to pop a few more in there. The next one we're looking at would be the 8th of March of 2015. Then we would have the 8th of September 2015 all the way to our maturity date, so that just carries on. Right, so let's just have a look here. That It's always good to notice after your settlement date, what is your next interest date. And according to your settlement date, what was your previous interest date. So now, later, we need to anticipate what we're going to need. We know with um, when we were doing all-in price, we're going to use fractional compounding later. So we're actually going to need what our R and our H are. That's our days. So let's have a look here. So firstly, our R is the number of days between our settlement date and the next interest date. And we're also going to need our H, which is the number of days between the previous interest date and the next interest date. So let's go to our day table and just have a look at how many days there are between the 12th of August and the 8th of September. So first I go and I find the 8th of September, that's 251, and I subtract the 12th of August, so we found the 12th of August, which is 224, and I get 27 days. So I'm going to fill that in. R is 27 days. Now my H is between the 8th of March and the 8th of September, so I'm going to go find the 8th of September again, 251, and I subtract the 8th of March which is 67, and I get 184. 
So that gives me 184 days. Yeah, 184 days. And we're going to use that later, but I would go straight there and fill it in on your timeline so that you can see exactly what's going on here. What we should notice at this point is that we're going to be working this out cum interest. The way we determine that is we have a look at the number of days between the settlement date and the next interest date and we see well that's more than 10 days. So we know we're going to be working this out cum interest. So let's actually just make a note of that. It's going to influence our formula. Cum interest. Awesome, so let's go and have a look at our formula. The first thing we need to determine is the price on the next interest date. So we need to determine the price on the next interest date, which is the 8th of September 2014. Now we have a formula for determining that from your formula sheet. So let's just have a look what that formula is. Here we go. There's your formula for working out the price on the next interest date. Now, bearing in mind that your D is your coupon rate half yearly, then what we have here is a present value annuity, and our Z in both those cases is our yield to maturely, uh, maturity, also half yearly. And the N is the number of interest dates after the date that we're looking at, in this case, the 8th of September the number of interest dates after that. So let's use this formula. Let's first write a list of all the variables that we need so that we got them in front of us. Okay. So we are trying to find our P. That's the price on that next interest date. Then our D is our coupon rate half yearly and that coupon rate is not converted to a decimal. Okay, so we know we're dealing with a coupon rate of 10.9 and it's half yearly, so we divide by 2. Then our Z we are working with as an interest rate. So that Z is our yield to maturity as an interest rate term we must convert to a decimal, becomes 0, 0,087, so it's a half yearly. Then our N is the number of interest dates after the 8th of September. So the number of interest dates after the 8th of September. So we know we're working all the way to 2044. So the way that I would work out your N, I would say, okay, well, I've got 2044 and I'm going to minus 2014. So I've got 2044 and minus 2014. But we know that it's half yearly, so it's twice a year, so times by two. But have a look here. I don't have two payments in 2044. I've got two payments in all the other years, but not in 2044. So I need to subtract that September payment that, that would have appeared. So subtract one of those payments. If we do that, we get a total of 59. So our N is 59. So let's go to our formula. Let's just make note of what our formula is. Our P is D N Z. Remember that's just the notation for the present value annuity plus 100 1 plus Z to the power of negative N. So just remember what this formula actually shows you. This is the present value of the stream of coupon payments. That's what our D is, our coupon payments. So that's the, it, takes, it takes you all the way back here. It's the present value of all our coupon payments back to the 8th of September. Then we add on the present value of the face value. Now remember we're working with, um, with our R percent, so we're working with, with basically our 100 here. So the present value of the face value. So that's that. So it's not an annuity, just a normal um, compound interest. Right, so let's fill in what we got. So we're dealing with our P 
on the 8th of September 2014. So that's equal to 10 comma 9 over 2, that's my D. Then this stands for my present value annuity. So that whole present value annuity formula. 1 plus my interest rate which is my Z 0 comma 0 087 over 2 to the power of 59 minus 1 all over, there's my interest rate again, 0 comma 0 087 over 2 1 plus 0 comma 0 087 over 2 to the power of 59 plus 100 times by 1 plus 0 comma 0 87 over 2. Squash that in there to the power of negative 59. Now remember to use your brackets on your calculator very carefully. Use your storing function. You might want to store 0 comma 0 87 over 2 because it's repeated. So make sure that you are familiar with the way you enter things into your calculator to cor get the correct order of operations. And you should get 123,236, etc. Do not round off at this point. Just leave it sitting on your calculator. We're going to use it now in our next step. Right, so what we've got here is the price on the 8th of September. But this price excludes the coupon date, the coupon rate on that date. But because we're working with cum interest, meaning that there's more than 10 days, we need to also include, because the buyer will also receive the coupon payment, that coupon payment, they'll also receive that on that date. So we need to add it to the price. Actually, let's just make a note of that. There we go. So we're going to add coupon on the 8th of September 2014 since 8th of September is more than 10 days. more than 10 days from the 12th of August. Right, so if we add that coupon rate, you're going to take your 123 and round it off. Okay, and you're going to add on your coupon rate of 10.9 over 2. And you get 128,686, etc. Do not round off. That's why I'm putting the dot, dot, dot there. Um, so, at that point, store that on your calculator because you're going to use it in the next calculation. So you don't want to round off. Now, we need to, so this is the price including, so price on the 8th of September, but it's including the coupon on that date. But the settlement date is actually the 12th of August, not the 8th of September. So it, this amount sitting at this place here on the 8th of September must be discounted back to the 12th of August to find the current price at the date of settlement. And we do that using fractional compounding. So we need to look now, this is why our R and our H comes into play, because we need to look at the fraction of days, that in relation to that in order to use fractional compounding. Right, so our F will be R over H. So it's 27 over 184. So we're using fractional compounding. Right, and that gives us, uh, allows us to find our all-in price. So to find our all-in price, we are going to take that amount back. So we're going to use compound interest to get to our present value. Okay, so now we are calculating our all-in price. 
all in price on the 12th of August 2014. Okay. That's equal to, let's just pop our formula in here so you can see it. Just the present value using fractional compounding. So my P is that amount that I said that you need to store. 128.686, etc. 1 plus, our interest rate is still the same, 0 0.087 half yearly. Negative 27 over 184. Because it's a fraction of the year. If you plug that all in your calculator, you should get that the all-in price is 127, comma, and remember five decimal places, 88535, and we're using that R percent notation. So let's go back and check if we have that as one of our options. There it is. Option number three. So let's just recap how we approach an all-in price question. Draw your timeline first just to get an idea of where your settlement date lies in relation to your interest dates and also so you can see your maturity dates. It also helps you to visualize so that you can calculate your N. Then decide am I dealing com interest, X interest based on those number of days if it's more than 10 or less than 10. We go to this formula in order to get the present value on that date, excluding the coupon rate. Then we add on the coupon rate in this case because it's cum interest. From there we are going to discount our amount back to our settlement date using just normal compound interest formula to get that present value and using fractional compounding.